Hey, what's up? This is Casey with RampantDesignTools.com. Today I'm going to do a little demo of Premiere Pro CS6. And this is what I'm probably going to call a Street Smarts demo. And so what it's going to do is show you some of the really basic things about Premiere, give you an intro to the interface and just kind of the workflow of how you would open up Premiere and just start using it. Um, if you're at all familiar with an editing program, it should go really easy. But the intention is that even if you don't know much about video editing, this will kind of give you at least an idea of how to get started with Premiere. So the first thing that will happen when you open Premiere is you'll get this welcome screen. From here you can make a new project, open a project, or if you're completely confused you can hit help. But let's open a new project just to get into this. Now here's the new project window. What do you want to name your project? Capture format. This is pretty important if you are capturing from either DV or HDV tape. Um, if you're not, then don't worry about it. And display formats are probably fine. Scratch disks are kind of important. If you're copying video to your computer in some way, it's going to ask you where to put it. I have an external drive that I like to put my audio and video on. And so I'm just going to say, okay, put audio and video on my media drive. And it says, sounds good. Previews, yep, do that too. So cool, I set everything to my media drive. Awesome. Now under my work drive, under Premiere Projects, I'm going to save this under Example. Sounds good, okay? So now after you decided all those things, apparently that wasn't good enough, because Premiere is asking you, do you want to make a new sequence? And if so, what kind of sequence do you want to make? If you're pretty familiar with video formats, this should be pretty straightforward. Just pick your format that you want to use. But for now, I'm going to say DSLR and 1080-24p because that's what I'm using. And you can go into your settings and make sure everything's hunky-dory. And it is. Looks all good. And I'll call this sequence name Edit. Great. So now we're at the Premiere interface. And this is the standard interface. As soon as you open up Premiere for the first time, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to walk you kind of through these windows. First one is the project window. This is where you bring in all of your media. This is where basically everything in the world is stored as far as your project goes. And so you can right click and import media and browse your computer to import it. Also if you make a title, I'll just make this and we'll get into this in a second, then it ends up being in that project window so you can reuse it. Basically think of it as everything ever goes in the project window. Kind of behind the project window are a couple more tabs. Media browser, which you can actually use this to browse your computer and import media. I never really use this. I usually kind of right click and go import on my project window. So I'm just going to close that. There's also an info tab, which I rarely use. I'm going to close it. Markers. Markers are really cool. We can get into that later. Um, history, I'm going to close for now. So basically the main three ones that I use are the project, effects, and markers. This is where Premiere keeps all of the effects. Seems like a good name for it, right? So here's video effects, and you can just open these down. These are basically presets or effects that you can drag onto your footage and make them look or act a certain way. They have these for video as well as audio. This is also where you're going to find your transitions. So, same deal, drag a transition from over here onto there. Great. Markers, this is really cool. If I go to my timeline and I make a marker, this little thing pops up and it lets me name the marker and I can change it and I can make this marker wide. And, and so that's really neat if you have different parts of your video that you want to label a certain way or if there's you know a good part that you make sure you don't want to miss. These are really, really great. And every time you make a marker, it shows up in this marker window. This is a brand new edition in CS6, so you won't see this in CS5. Over here we have the timeline. This is where everything's going to happen, okay? This is a basically a visual way of representing what's going to happen at a certain time. So this playhead goes over and at a certain time, certain different things are going to happen, and we're going to get into that later. Over here we have audio meters, and that's going to show you exactly how loud your audio is. It'll show you when you're clipping, and it's going to be awesome. Here are our tools, and there's all sorts of nifty little tools and tricks you can use to make your edit. 
Here we have the program monitor. This is what the end viewer is going to see. Everything that happens in the timeline is going to be reflected on the program monitor. Not to be confused with the source monitor, which when we load some media in here is going to look a lot like the program monitor, but this is kind of like you preview it and then you drag it down into the timeline and then it's actually in the project. You're kind of like prepping things before you put it into the timeline. We also have effect controls behind this source monitor and that's where, remember these effects down here? When you drag them onto a clip, you're going to end up controlling little things about the effect up here. So pretty self-explanatory. We also have an audio mixer so you can make sure all your audio levels are fine. And then metadata, which lets you look at just about all of the information you would ever want, plus some for your clips and your media that you have inside of Premiere. So that's a general overview of the interface. Let's get to work. And I'm just going to open one of my projects. So my project's open and I have some media that I've imported into the project window. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click and open it in the source monitor. So here I can view my entire clip and figure out exactly where I want to start my edit. And so I think I'm going to start it right about, right about there. So I'm going to move this back and just make sure I want to start it on a good frame. And I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for in point. And then I can move down later and set my out point by hitting O. So in and out. And then it's just going to use this part in between the ins and outs for my media. So I'm going to drag this down into my timeline. And all I did was grab on this screen and then drag it down into my timeline. And that brings in my video and my audio. Or I can go right here to these two little buttons and I can either drag just my video or just my audio. And so that's a pretty slick way of doing it because sometimes you just want to use the video for B-roll. Sometimes you just want to use the audio because it's an interview or a voiceover. There's my first clip and I'm going to do this for all of my clips. And what's cool is when you have your ins and outs set on your clip, you can go to the end of the timeline by hitting end on your keyboard, and then you can hit period, and it will load this clip right into the timeline, right where this timeline marker is. So I can hit end, double click my wide shot that I want. I already have my ins and outs set, and I'm just going to hit period to put it in there. You can also hit comma for insert. Now check this out. If I open up my SAM angle, and let's say I want to put it in between these two clips. Well, I can hit down, and that's going to bring me to my next edit point. And so right now I'm in between these two clips with my playhead. I can hit comma, and it's just going to throw this video right in between those two clips. So, a couple different ways to do it, but that's basically how you lay down an edit. And you just go through your shots like that. Now let's say I want to add some music. So I'm going to right click in my project window and I'm going to import some media. Here under my music I have my run rampant track. I'm going to import that and then I can just drag this either right from the project window or I can double click it, open it in the source and I can set my ins and outs just like I do with video. And then I can drag this audio right into my timeline. Now this timeline, I can twirl down these tracks and I can basically see more information. And so I can see waveforms if I twirl down audio and I see thumbnails if I twirl down video. This also lets you adjust things like the opacity or the levels of the tracks really easily right within the timeline without having to double click and load them up and go up to the effect controls and go to the volume and bring it down. And so let's say I do a whole bunch of work and I have a completely finished movie that I love, that I've already added sound effects to, I've already made my music and made my cuts really great. Let's say I want to add some effects. So I'm going to go behind my project window to my effects tab and twirl down video effects. Now I can go to color correction and let's say I'm going to go to three-way color corrector and just drag it onto that clip. 
Now it automatically opens it up in the effect controls and I can do some crazy cool stuff, maybe warm it up, bring down the shadows a little bit, make it look nice and funky. And what's cool is I can take this and select it and I can hit Command C and copy or Control C on a PC and select all of my shots that I want to apply this to and just hit Command V and it's going to apply that same look to all my shots. And so now I have all my shots being funky and I only had to apply it to one so that's pretty cool. And you can do that with any effect. So let's say I'm happy with that and that's my finished movie. I'm going to add a title and so I'm going to go up to title and hit new title default still you can also have like rolling credits or crawling credits I usually just go with a still so here's my still and I'll call this titles makes sense and I'll call this death fight awesome name and I'll just make this into something awesome by the way, Premiere has a really, really nice title making thing. You can pick from about a thousand different presets and you can adjust just about every little thing that you would ever want to adjust on your titles. It's not quite as robust and amazing as After Effects, but you know what? It's pretty good for actually being inside of the same app. So that looks great. I'm just going to go with that preset. And here's my titles title down in the project window. So now I can drag this to my timeline and I can either put this over my video, which I think I'll put it over the last shot. Just like that. Or I can put it after and just make it over black. Anyway, you get the idea. You can play around with it. I can twirl down this layer and I can adjust the opacity. So this is a pretty nice start. In just the past couple minutes, we've already brought our media into Premiere and made a little edit, added some music, added some titles, and even color corrected this sequence. So now it's time to render it because you want people to actually be able to see it. That would be really good. So I'm going to go to File and go to Export. And there's a bunch of different things you can export. But if you're wanting just to export like a QuickTime file, just hit Media. And so that's going to pop up. And it's going to ask you all these export settings. You can also hit a preset, which is usually pretty good. The HD 720p 24 H.264 AAC 48 kilohertz is a lot to say. Also, it's a pretty good preset for making a video for the web. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to select my output name, select where it's supposed to go. Put it on my desktop, that's fine. And here I have a couple options. I can either queue this and basically put it in line, like to wait to export. Um, if I'm going to export several movies, I might want to queue a whole bunch of them and then start it before I go and take a break, and so it can do all the work while I'm gone. Or I can just export it right now. And for now, I'm just going to export it. All right, and it's done. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And here's my movie. So now I can view my movie. Looks great to me. Hopefully that should give you at least enough information to be dangerous using Premiere. And you can actually load media in, get it edited, get it color corrected, put a title on it, and export it and have something awesome to show at the end. So if you have any questions, go ahead and comment on this video or you can send me an email. Hit me up on Twitter, Casey and HD. But once again, my name is Casey Ferris. I'm with RampantDesignTools.com and I will catch you next time.